I was going with these like little earbud things, right? They were, they were nice, man. I had these little earbud things in, but the problem was I couldn't hear myself talk and it was like fucking my ears up and everything. So I went back to the cans. And yeah, I'm actually I, looking at a set of cans right now to, uh, for my, I got this nice little um, home work office set up right now, but I'm missing a pair of nice over the head joints. These, these, uh, I got the AirPod Pro joints. and Those are good. They work. They're right, but they, um, they hurt ears. They keep slipping out, man. They're poorly designed, man. The tips are terrible. No, I use the jobbers, man. The jobber 65s and money, dude. Yeah. The jobbers, man, and they got a new one out. Let's make sure we're good on 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 LinkedIn here. Let's make sure we're streaming. We are streaming. What is up, everybody? It is what the sixteenth day of April, dude. All these days oh, are just blending dude. together, man. It's like Groundhog Day, it's every day. day, man. It's every day. Every day is the same freaking day, man. It is right. the sixteenth day of April. I am live with my man Jay Salim. Jay Salim. Jay Salim. Jay Salim. Get my name right. Salim, baby. I had it right. I had it right the second time, man. I can guess yourself, man. You see, go to instinct, baby. It is Jay and I go way back, and we'll get to that in a little bit. We're just making sure that we are live and running. It looks like we're up on the old LinkedIn machine, Facebook, Twitch. Have you used Twitch at all? You play with Twitch? Nah, I'm not that advanced, man. I can't even get my head wrapped around Snapchat, man. I stopped doing Snapchat. I just do the filters with the kids. How about how about how about how about uh, TikTok? I'm on TikTok? Yeah, man. I don't I don't post, but I'm on TikTok like. At least half hour a day, man. I, that shit is so funny. I, I got my, I got my daughter on TikTok. She's, she's checking out. Oh, yeah, we're live, man. We got, we got, some, we got, we got, we got some people here. We got some people checking in. Twitch. Twitch. Hold on, let me, let me lower the volume here, and we'll, we'll get going in a minute. All right. So I've been, I've been doing this show almost every day, man. And I went back and like the first one I did during the coronavirus situation was like, it was like mid March. I think it was like the fifteenth of March, sixteenth of March over there. And we're a month later, man. And, and we're in this shit. We are absolutely in this shit, man. It is real. It is going down. And my man Jay has been around the block, right? So his day job, he is the EVP of people and culture over at Complex Networks. And I am so right. proud to see, you know, Jay and I have known each other for probably about five years now. Um, longer than that. Oh, about, that. Yeah, like, it's been about six, seven like years, maybe. 2012, right? Yeah, but 20, we go way back to 2012, man. 2013, somewhere around there. 2012 is way back now, right? We're talking about 2012 is way back. Yeah, and 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 this guy has had a tremendous, tremendous career. Um, but the first thing I want to talk about, and and thank you, man, for for your service. Uh, Army, um, right? Army, yeah, right? Army, Army, right? Army, right? And what yeah, years? What, what, call me a Marine, man. I would never do that, man. <laughs> I mean, let a, let alone call you Air Force and Navy. Well, and, oh, and what? God. <laughs> and what? And what years? What, what years did you serve, man? So I served uh, active duty from 03 to 05. A year of that was spent, uh, 13 months of that was spent in Iraq. And then I I, uh, I got out for six months and then got recalled back into the Army Reserves. So I served as a reservist in Fort Hamilton, Brooklyn for like two and a half years. You had to defend Brooklyn. Oh, oh, you- oh <laughs> man. Oh. Brooklyn. Fort 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 Brooklyn there, but you know Jay and I are, are Brooklyn bred. Um, let's go. Uh, sheep said bay, man. Sheep said bay before right. turn, before turn, man, before turn. Now you know I'm li- I'm living in Jamaica Queens right now, and uh, my lease is coming up in like a month and a half, right? Mm. And I'm looking at all of these apartments in Brooklyn, and the prices are dropping like a rock, man. I'm like, man, it's a good time to move, man. It is a good time, but I want to talk about before we get into your 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 current job and all that kind of fun stuff. Now, Jay's been through it. He's been through adversity. He's been through hard times, and he's been through situations that are out of his control, which is totally relatable to the situation we're in now, right? So let's take it back to your army days. Like, let's talk about a situation, right? Maybe when you were coming up. Maybe it was boot camp. Maybe it was when you were first deployed. Maybe it was the first time you stepped foot on the sands in Iraq, man, when things were out of your control. Let's talk about that for a little bit, and like what it felt like, what kind of mindset you needed to be in. Uh, well, you know, the, the military trains you for that kind of shit, right? They're like, listen, in in the fog of war, shit is just going to be going on all over you, right? And what you have to do is hyper-focus on what the mission is, what your specific role in that mission is, and execute. Um but at the same time, remain malleable and adjust to your circumstances. Uh, 
So having uh, what they call in the military situational awareness, focusing on your mission, but also being aware of your surroundings and circumstances, understanding the variables that are around you and adjusting accordingly, man. So you, you have to have that bit of flexibility, but also remain focused. In a situation like this, man, it really is out of your control. There's literally very little, unless you work at, you know, uh, World Health Organization or right. you're working on a vaccine, there's not much you can do. Um, but what you can control that, you know, what my CEO Rich always preaches to us is 95% of things are out of your control. 5% is, and you got to crush that 5%. You got to so it. Situation like this, man, just don't do stupid shit. Don't go out there, you know, uh, hanging out with your boys in large groups and putting yourself in, because it's not just about you, man. And that's no, nah, don't thing. be like, selfish. Don't be selfish. Like if you want to be careless and reckless with your life, listen, that's your decision. But, uh, your actions have effect, have, has an effect on other people. So making sure that you're being considerate and safe, not just for you, but the people in your family, that, that's the number, number one thing you can do. I know people have heard that ad nauseum. Uh, true. But it, there's a reason you're hearing it ad nauseum because it is the most important thing you can do. And there's a lot of dumb motherfuckers out there just not fucking listening, man. No, man. And it's crazy. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, like, listen, I, I'm not going to call them out, but I've seen certain religious groups, right? They're still congregating. They're still doing shit out there. They're still being dumb and they don't get it. The only way we're going to get through this is together. And it, it's interesting too, man. Um, you know, I, I, I talk to a lot of people across the country and I think unless you're in California, New York or the States that are getting hit right now, I think there's a weird sense of that. It's not that serious. It's not going to happen to me. And I'll tell you something straight up. Seven weeks ago in New York, we had that same mindset that this shit was not coming here. We were fine. And everything and it hit now yes we are saturated we are deep you know extremely populated here but don't even think for one second that you're safe there man and no. you need to start now and you have a heads up and you have a warning and you've got it man like take it seriously anyone's watching now take that shit seriously from new york you know jason jamaica queens is in elmhurst queens is literally ground zero right now getting I'm, annihilated i live in jamaica queens i'm about 10 minute drive from elmhurst and it's a war zone there, right? It's really bad out here, man. There's a, in my apartment building, there's been 20 people uh, with cases. Um, it, it's terrible. And that seems to be the norm around here. People are just, you know, it's spreading like wildfire over here. And, <clears throat> you know, it, it, it's a situation where it, it's probably, it, it is avoidable. Uh, if you take the proper precautions, but at the same time, you have to have empathy and, and try to help as best as you can while also being smart about it. Yeah. I've had the urge to, you know, volunteer and go to the hospital, but I've had to fight that urge because there's very little value I can bring. Um, and you got to look out for your family, right? Like it's a yeah. weird balance, right? Like it's, how do you, how do you be helpful and mindful and be altruistic at the same time? Like you don't want to bring that shit home. Yeah. And, you know, as, as a soldier, you you know, I I personally have had this mentality where there was a dangerous situation or I'm, I'm first, I'm like Leroy Jenkins, like, right you, know what I mean? it's, you know, not even thinking about it, just uh, I've gambled and put my life on the line countless times uh, in the military and outside of the military to help others. And but in uh, these particular circumstances, it's not an enemy you can fight like that like you right you that's a difference like you can't your see enemy. enemy yeah you have to know your enemy man and this yeah. enemy is you know unless you have a vaccine you can't combat it so the most you can do is protect yourself it's crazy it's almost like a, like a crazy one of those like marvel superhero movies because the enemy right now is invisible and it morphs right this fucker morphs and it's got different strains and you can't see it and it's invisible and it like goes through walls and shit and it has yeah. like no crypt there's no kryptonite there's no kryptonite to Corona, man. The exactly. kryptonite is us being mindful and careful, and we're going to beat this thing. We have to. There's Precise. no choice. So let's let, let's switch it up a little bit, right? And and I want to I want to talk about present day right now. I mean, I have had the privilege, and 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 I tell you this all the time, man. Like sitting on the sidelines here, watching. I've had a front row seat to watch your career grow. You know, that first stop at Boombox, man. When our when our boy our boy. <laughs> Our boy Johnny, you know, shout out you, to John Hendricks, man. Shout out John Hendricks. He, you know, he 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 pulled you up 
and he said, I see something in this dude, and he put you in a spot to succeed, and you took that opportunity, and you fucking crushed it, man. Yeah, and man. now you're EVP at one of the dopest companies on the planet, Complex, man, and I'm just proud of you. I just want to give you quick love and shout out on that one, man. How many How many people How many people in the fam there? Oh, at, at Complex? Yeah. Uh, we have uh, a little over 300 full-time employees uh, and countless freelancers. Um from permalance to to you know freelance writers tent you know we we have a, a a pretty large set we're about under 500 altogether got it so let, let's go back a little bit let's go back to early march right like look, if you don't mind sharing a little bit of what that conversation is like at the executive level i mean share what you feel comfortable like when you guys hear the things are happening when you hear there might be a lockdown when you hear that like and 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 kind of tell us like how much of your crew now is remote like the culture wise there but you basically had to take everybody that was in the office or any of your offices and take them the road take us through that thought process and the conversation yeah yeah at, at first you know, it was, I mean, it was taken seriously, but not to this degree. Um, and as the news started to get progressively worse, we we actually planned ahead. Um, so I, I always felt like we were two steps ahead of where things were going because I could kind of see where it was going based on everything that I saw uh, or, or read at the time. <clears throat> so we we had a game plan to to shut down the office about two and a half three weeks before uh it was mandated um and that kind of for uh forward thinking has set us up well uh because we we planned for all of these scenarios from an executive level you know there there needed to be some coaxing because every executive has a different interest right and a work from home scenario affects them differently. Absolutely. So some executives would be, uh, you know, more, um, you know, uh, I wouldn't, stubborn is not the right word, but trying to figure out ways to maintain continuity and maintain that, you know, normal workflow. Uh, and it really wasn't something that they wanted to adjust because it would have been arguable for that department. But, you know, as things became progressively, you know, real, uh, real and clearer, they automatically was like, you know what? No more pushback. I totally get it. Let's do it. it the right, the writing, the writing was on the wall, right? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, yeah. And I, I played a huge part in, in coming up with that strategy. It was a, definitely a group effort, but you know, I, um, I led the, I, I created the initial strategy, shared it with the leadership team. Everybody gave their input and we, uh, we, we put together a pretty good plan that actually has complex in a good spot right now because we have been planning and, you know, uh, creating ideas for uh, developing content from a work from home scenario. I like it. For over, a, you know, almost a month and a half, two months now. But so. like, but let's go back, like, like, like your, your golden thread at complex is culture. I mean, it's ingrained in the DNA of the company, man. Absolutely. And like culture, culture could be remote culture could be physical. Right. But what do you do to ensure that you still keep that complex vibe, that you still keep that DNA of the company while everyone's remote? How do you keep camaraderie? How do you keep spirit? How do you keep like everyone kind of lifted and going, man? Well, the first thing you need to do, you know, I, I, I don't know if uh, a lot of your viewers are, you know, uh, familiar with uh, uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? So you can, at the very top is, you know, that kind of, <clears throat> uh, sen you know, cultural sense of pride and, you know, your core values and stuff like that. But if you're not fulfilling those needs under, which is job security, livelihood, stuff like that, um, the rest of that stuff is going to fall on deaf ears, right? So we had to be transparent about where we were. And luckily, we uh, were able to not move forward with any layoffs. Uh, uh, our parent companies, Verizon and Hearst, and Hearst uh, article dropped a couple of days ago about Hearst uh, taking pride in the fact that they are not going to be conducting layoffs. That's a big one. Um, so we are one of the few companies right now that are in a very fortunate position uh, to where we, we don't have to take those actions at this time. So 
Um, once that was right, like you take the fear out of people and you let them know that hey, everyone's kind of safe here because you go and you, you have to take care of your people. People are scared, man. They're losing jobs. The economy's going to shit. Absolutely, absolutely. So once you you know take that burden off of the people, then you know that inherently will get people rallied around the company because they're like, wow, you know, the company's taking it on the chin for us, and we're going to be incurring losses, you know, in order to maintain uh you know our staff so <clears throat> that right there is going to be a rallying cry uh but i recognize that not every company is in that position so for most companies who uh have to make those hard decisions i would you know message and i've been in that situation before where i have to i had to lay off a lot of people um transparency is the number one thing during this time people get it man they appreciate it too absolutely man uh if it one it should never come as a surprise so as much um messaging as possible up front and then once you execute it being transparent and uh people understanding the reasons why <clears throat> if you try to be um you know, uh, duplicitous about it, or, uh, you know, it's going to lead to resentment and a lack of trust within uh, staff towards leadership. And that will kill your culture immediately. Yeah. I mean, that's another thing too. You need to, it's a tough, right? Cause like you got to balance keeping, keeping, keeping it level and making sure you don't dip, but there's also a lot of opportunities to increase camaraderie, right? Because everyone's kind of like banding together, right? As a family, right. we're in this shit together. We're in it to win it. We're right. sticking with it. We got to get through. We got to keep the business alive, right? There's a lot of there's a lot of silver linings. We'll get to silver linings later on, but like you know, the silver linings here. Now, let's talk about how you're working with like a lot of the heart, like the um department. We'll call them department managers, the department heads. You know, to keep workflow going, to keep to keep work going, to keep process, project flow. Are you doing, is there any coaching there or any tools, any skills that you need to, because people aren't set up for this shit, right? Like people aren't yeah. ready for this. So yeah. how do you get them onboarded quickly and ready to go? It, it, you know, preaching the value of face-to-face -face interactions in this uh, um, climate has been huge. A lot of managers, you know, they have a tendency to skip one-on-ones or, you know, uh, cancel or postpone yeah. uh, group meetings and stuff like that. That daily visual interaction with people is actually huge right now because people are isolated and, um, you know, are in a solitary setting for most of the day, right? So <clears throat> I've made it mandatory that all, uh, you know, departments have at least a daily, uh, some form of a daily stand up. Like a stand up, yeah. Uh, that has been huge. Um, also, um, you know, empathy, man, and having flexibility and like people, they they aren't just dealing with works. The personal uh, stuff has, um, you know, uh, trumped, for lack of a better term, yeah. worked right. No pun, pun intended there. Um. <laughs> So giving people that added flexibility to where, you know, they can take care of personal stuff, make that store run, you know, or, you I'm know, school the kids, you don't know what's going giving, on, man. Giving people that kind of work flexibility so that, you know, if their personal lives are in flux, there's no way that they can uh, focus on the work. So we, we do have to remain flexible and also, you know, one thing I've been discussing with my team is encouraging PTO. Um, yeah, I, you know what's I, yeah. Let, let's let, wait. wait I want, pause on PTO for a second because I do want to ask you that question. But I want to go back for a second too, and it's interesting. Some people, I got I got four in my household here. You got a fam there. Some people have just themselves, right? So when they go to work, that's a camaraderie. That's their family. They're 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 not alone. So you have to really be mindful about everybody's unique situation. Some people yeah. are parents and they got, they got kids, they got to homeschool for a couple hours in the morning and you got to be flexible with their schedule. I have friends with special need kids and they're going through so much fucking shit right now because they can't get the services they need. Like everybody's in crazy situations. Some people have elderly parents and relatives in nursing homes and they're literally worrying every second. Like this is not normal work from home. 
And I want to make that very clear because I've been seeing a lot of shit around LinkedIn and everything talking about work from home. Oh, the trustworthiness. Like companies can now see that everyone's trustworthy to work from home. This is not normal work from home. These no. are different circumstances. Absolutely. Normal work from home is when my kids at school and they're not here all day. Normal work from home is when you're not worried about your elderly parent in the nursing home. That's normal work from home. Absolutely. There's no one size fits all solution. That's why I've been training and encouraging managers to uh, understand their individual employee needs and blanket policy uh, works on some level, but you do have to, uh, again, be malleable and adjust and understanding everyone's per uh, personal situation and making accommodations accordingly. So let me ask you this, man. Have you hit any roadblocks, stop signs, speed bumps? I, I, I wouldn't say stop signs, uh, speed bumps for sure, right? Like, you know, we are, um, there. there's no blueprint for this. So, no. you, you know, uh, what's the saying? Uh, you want to make God laugh, make a plan. Uh, <laughs> I haven't heard uh, that one, but I, I like it. It's a good one. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you, you plan, you steer the ship the best way you know how. And, of course, there's going to be uh, some, you know, unaccounted for variables that, you know, throw a monkey wrench in your plan. But luckily there hasn't been anything that has severely um, right. altered uh, what our plans are. We just had to make adjustments uh, as, as we've encountered uh, issues. But for the most part, man, you know, people have adjusted rather nicely. I, I would say that first week. Well, um, it was an adjustment week. Everybody had to get used to yeah, it. Yeah, everybody was like, holy shit. Everybody's making a run at the store and, you know, stocking up. And, you know, people are worried about family members and their living situations. I've had a that lot. That was a transition period, man. Now now we're in cruise control. Yeah, now it's becoming, you know, uh, part of the new normal. And people are, have made those adjustments. So I think we're, we're hitting a stride. I... I think the next major obstacle is getting people back to work. Yeah, let's let's pause on the back to work for a second here. I want to talk about something interesting, PTO, right? Time, time off. Like, listen, man, we've all had to delay vacations. We all know that. And, and the one equalizer, man, is everybody's everything is canceled. Yeah. There's not one person on this planet that's got a birthday party, a shindig, a party, something to go to. Everything's everybody's canceled. Life is canceled right now. On hold, pause. Everyone's out of that. But PTO is interesting, man, because maybe you need a day to just in the middle of the week to just let loose. And by let loose, I mean just not work, right? Let loose doesn't mean like, you know, you're, you're going on vacation, but maybe you need to like just go take a walk. Maybe you need a day off. Like, so you are you encouraging for people to still keep kind of days off? I mean, we're not saying maybe take a week off, or maybe you are. No, no. I, I think it's as needed, right? So- right. I, you know, being at home, I, and I found myself in this situation where you're kind of overcompensating, and I don't think I'm unavailable from the more, moment I wake up to the moment I go to sleep. You can get you. I, I'm always working, right? And that could lead to burnout. Um, Something we're not talking a lot about because people are home and they're not commuting. Because if you're commuting, maybe you shut off on the train. But right now, you're you hit it. You hit it, man. Like. From the time you wake up, you look at your phone until you go to bed. You're on. You feel you feel like you need to over communicate. So burnout's a real thing, man. How you dealing with that? And how you minding your people? Well, I, I'm encouraging people. Well, we, we have about three hour long blocks throughout the week where it isn't work related. Where everybody like we just I just got off of a video chat where we have our virtual happy hours every Thursday, and no work related stuff. Um, we curate it beforehand and everybody joins. We have a glass of wine and we have speakers who are presenting certain stuff. I spoke about two, a week, week and a half ago, presented some of my polo collection. Uh, Rich just spoke and he had a, a, an AMA. Let me ask you. Let me let me ask you one thing here. And I don't mean to cut you off, but I mean to cut you off. What is the prized piece in the polo collection? Oh, it's definitely the. I have a few grails, but, and this is probably going to be generic, but it means a lot to me. It's That's the Snow Beach pullover. Yeah. Um, the one that Ray wore in the uh, video all those years ago in 93. Um, when I first started collecting polo, that was like my 
my my mountaintop, right? That was my Mount Everest. It's a very expensive piece. Uh, <clears throat> and I was like, yo, I'm, it's one of the things I was working for. Some people work for, you know, a house or, or a car. That, I was working for that piece as a collector. And I was able to cop it uh, about three years ago, right before they retroed it, actually. Right. I didn't even realize they were going to retro it right before the news started that they were going to drop a, a retro version of Snow Beach uh, a, a, a collection. And uh, I actually paid an ungodly amount of money for that. And, oh, good. It, and I was pissed off. But I have the original from 93 uh, in my closet. Big up, big up to my man, Mursky, Jared Mursky. Anthony's up in the house. We got some people up in here. You know something, dude? Let's let's talk about that. Let's talk about for a minute things that make you feel good. So right now, let me see if I can move my camera here. These are my Shea Stadium seats, man. That's amazing. Um, and and the story that I like to give, and I've told the story a couple times on the air here. This was two thousand, my daughter, two thousand ten, two thousand eleven. They 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 built City Field, right, Queens Queens Bridge, mm -hmm. up in the house, right. We got Flushing, and. They built City Field and they Shea Stadium. Been around since the sixties, man. I grew up as a Mets fan. I am diehard Mets fan. Seen mm -hmm. a lot go down there. And they tore down the stadium and they were selling these seats. They they ripped up all the seats here. And I remember, I go to my dad. I'm like, Dad, they're selling the seats from Shea Stadium, and I want to buy them. And they weren't like astronomically expensive, but at the time, mm -hmm. to drop like two two thousand dollars on these bad boys, you're like, for seats, yeah, right. And yeah. I go to my dad, and my dad's a New York City Board of Ed school teacher, right? He values a dollar, right? And I go, Dad, but he's also a diehard baseball fan, and he gets it. I go, Dad, do you think I should buy them? He goes, will you regret not buying them? Mm -hmm. And I go, absolutely. He goes, then buy them and figure it out later. <laughs> and now we're sitting here, and I'm sitting in my Chase Stadium seats, man. You know what? Uh, my my old boy, Chase Stein, who is my friend now. Audrey. Um, he uh he told me something and I I'll never forget it. Uh, never apologize for your passions, man. And you know if you have something passionate and you love it, you know do it. Whatever that shit is, you know what I mean. Whether it's collecting polo, whether it's baseball, whether it's you know w whatever it is. Um, that's what life's about, man. Do what the fuck makes you happy, man. Right. So let me ask you now, right? Like, because I think now that. that now's the time to focus on, on things that keep you happy right now's the time to keep you happy. What, what makes you happy right now, man, outside of work, outside of work. Um, honestly, I, I found a newfound appreciation for my wife. <laughs> I love I, you, dude, I'm laughing. I'm laughing because I agree with you, man. Wait, right, so let, 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 let's, let's chop this up a little bit. Right. Yeah. Like, is there, is there something that you notice? Like you guys have been around, you guys have been together for a little bit. You guys have been together for a few years. Four years. Yeah. Right. Are you finding something in her that maybe like you, you forgot about that you haven't appreciated for a while? Like, what is it that you, you're appreciating? I, 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 I forgot about was something I haven't appreciated for a while is, you know, her, her sense of humor and her personality. Um, she, she can make me laugh like nobody else. Um, and, Love, being around her more and just us cracking jokes back and forth. I'm trying to convince her to let me get a dog right now. It's not fucking happening. Do you think that's a good time, man? I mean, it's a lot of outdoor time. I think it's a great time, man. Um, there's a you lot of train. You could train at your home to train the dog. That's one. It's like a baby. It's like a baby. That's one thing. Uh, look, hey, baby. <laughs> he wants a dog. Yeah. Let, let, you want to let me get the dog? No. Oh, shit. All right. <laughs> I'll try again. Later. By the way, if you guys want to follow their love, follow his Instagram, man. There's so much freaking love on that Instagram. Thank you. It is lovey-dovey. It is lovey-dovey central, man. Yeah. But no, I think it's a good time to get a dog. To your point, you have more time to train a, a dog right now. And there's a lot of dogs that need a home, man. And uh, a lot of people aren't in the mindset to adopt right now. But, you know, luckily my situation allows for it. And we All can right. use the extra, you know, uh, distraction. Buddy yeah um to to crack jokes on so. no I, li I like it man and and like here's the thing man like and i don't mean to take a dark turn here but like there's a lot of people that don't have the love that don't have the homes that don't have the infrastructure that we have right now there's a lot of people going through some dark times yeah, and it's tough times, right yeah. like there's a lot of domestic abuse there's a lot of people crammed into small apartments in the inner cities right it's a lot of people that like parents aren't working they're not making money it's hard like 
I take it for granted, man, that for me, I got to put a mask on. I got to go wait in line. I'm in the burbs here. It's real easy for me to go to the supermarket and be safe. But we're talking about the cities, right? We're talking about these inner cities, man, where there's so much congestion and there's so much saturation. It's hard to keep a distance. And that's tough, man. And people the are getting sick. And people pounds it is there's no light at the end of the tunnel right now, right? No. The future is as unknown as it's ever been in any of our lives. Scary shit. And you know, everything from not just the virus, but from the economy and how certain industries are being decimated right now, things like live events. Oh man, sports. Like people are losing hospitality, their travel, retail. It's terrible. People are losing their jobs left and right. But not only that, there is no I like the impact on the industry that you work in long term is completely unknown right now. And certain industries might just either go away or be severely altered. <clears throat> and those are people's careers that they've put in 15, right. 20 years into, man. And just and overnight, overnight. Overnight, it's gone, and it's scary. The the and it's not. It's sudden, and it's um, you know, uh, not something that people have planned for. So it's really hard to have a mentality to adjust and learn new skills, for instance, or break into a new industry um, uh, uh, when you weren't planning to. It, and it's something that people are gonna have to do in order to survive, man. And it's, it is scary. Right. You kind of hit the nail on the head on that one. Right. And we could, we could spend a lot of time talking about transferable skills and having the mindset to have to I, shift. I really think that's one of the things that attracted me to HR as a, um, a, a profession is that it is industry agnostic. Right. Um, where I, mean, I, I have a background in, in HR doing HR in, media and advertising but if i really needed to do hr in you know for manufacturing or whatever you could do it I could, I mean, right because you have the skill set you have the ability to do it yeah yeah every every industry needs hr and that was i didn't want to be hamstrung by a, a a specific um you know industry where you know if something like this were to happen i'm not saying i predicted this but like I, I wanted to have that flexibility. That was one of the biggest things that attracted me to HR. So. I love it, man. So let, let, let's close it out with two things here. One, what are you watching on TV right now? You know, we just started Ozark. Uh, See, wait, wait. For, for first so season. Like, I'm up to episode three in season one. I literally, about three hours ago, I just finished the finale of season three. So I'm not going to tell you anything because it won't even make sense. It won't even make sense at this point. Yeah. But you're in for a ride, man. Ozark. Ozark, Ozark, Ozark. Now, here's another one. Here's an undercover show for you, man. We watch, it's a four-part series on Netflix called Unorthodox, right? Okay. And it may, on the surface, it may not get you interested, but I'm telling you, it's fucking gold, man. It's mm -hmm. a story of the, uh, a Hasidic Jewish girl in Brooklyn, and she breaks away from the pack. She run away, run, runs away to Berlin, and she finds herself there. Dude, I'm telling you, like, it may not sound that interesting, but I'm telling you, it's gold, I, man. I'm interesting. Dude, it's really, it's really, it's really good. And I just started season three of Fauda. You watch, you ever check out Fauda? I haven't. You know what it's about? No. So it's the um, uh, the Israeli um, special forces, like undercover, undercover, like the real undercover SWAT team in oh. the uh, in the in the Israeli special forces that infiltrates like Palestine and everything. Oh, but it's definitely. very fair because it gives a very fair perspective of what's happening on the other side, man. Three seasons, subtitles, but if you hit the little button, they do the, the voiceover thing, mm -hmm. which is bearable. Like they have an accent on the voiceover. It's not like a total American dude doing like an Israeli accent. No, it's it's legit. Right? Like it's good. Dude, Fauda is you'd like it, dude. I'm yeah. telling you, you'd like Fauda. Chop Fauda, man. Yeah. It's shoot him up, it's fast, it's it's real. I think you'd appreciate that. But here's the way I like to end all of these lives right here. There's a lot of bad shit in this world. There's a lot of bad shit going on right now. We all know that, right? Like, it's tough to look at the news. We don't want to deal with politics, man. Like, I can't even I can't even think straight. I can't even tell you when I see something about our president, man. I don't know whether it's real. I don't know if it's fact or fiction. I don't know what the hell that is. I try to form my own opinions. I try to avoid all that shit. So I try to look for the silver linings, right? I try to look for the good. So two silver linings, Jay. 
professional and personal right now? Uh, I mean, professional for me personally, um, you know, having the ability to lead a company without having to lay off people has been the ultimate silver lining for me. Um, <clears throat> you know, it, it's something like, I, as I mentioned before, it's something that I've done a couple of times in my past and it is literally the worst part of my job. Um, and in this climate, under these circumstances, having to not do that is an unbelievable silver, silver lining for me, man. I love um, it. And then uh, personally, man, it's, you know, getting closer to my family. You know, I'm a workaholic. You know me, man. I, I'm in the I'm first one in, last one out uh, most of the time. And I rarely have that family time. And being able to spend more time with my wife and my kids and uh, yeah. my cops I'm talking to more and seeing more, it's something that I'm really, really appreciating, man. And I'm going to go, you know, going forward, it's giving me perspective of how much I, time I do have to invest in my family and trying to carve out more time to be with them even after things, uh, you know, get back to normal. And last but not least, your thoughts on the Riz's audio quality on that bullshit Riz <laughs> DJ premiere thing. How does this guy, I mean, I, the Riz is like my, he's at the pinnacle. He is a Pope of my hip hop, like Riz and Nas, Queensbridge, like, you look at this little Jewish kid from Long Island here. I mean, I love nothing more than the Wu Tang Clan. I literally mm -hmm. like like that like. But I'm like RZA. Part of my home office setup is a box. Uh, Raekwon, is that Cuban Links? What? Yeah, it's it's a special uh, version of the purple tape. Yeah. yeah. Hold on, let me. Ah. Oh. <laughs> so it comes with a book. Only built for Cuban links, right there. What year is that? Is that uh, it's like a special edition joint and it has the purple tape? What do you even have something to play that in? No, I don't actually. It's a decoration. You got to go buy a car from 87 and play that. You got to go buy <laughs> 20th anniversary, joint. 95. All yeah. right, man. Raekwon, but Raekwon the chef, right there. Back to Risen, man. Somebody fucking made me die. <laughs> uh, they were like, yo, in the comments, they were like, I guess Bobby's not so digital. Bobby <laughs> Adel. <Adelaide. laughs> I fucking lost it, man. Yo, that was a moment, man. And that was cool. I was watching it with my son. My son's turning 18 uh, next week. Oh, man. And He's leaving. It can't leave now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, you're 18. You think you could leave the house? You're not leaving. Ah, uh, son. <laughs> you thought, but nah, man. And no, but being able, like, those two guys were the soundtrack to my childhood. Yeah, man. And being able to share that with him, and it wasn't like there was an appreciation there from both of them. And uh, it, it was something like, even pre quarantine, it was just something I would have paid, you know, Mayweather, uh, Pacquiao prices, pay per view to see that. Um, and for them to do that was it was historic for hip hop, man. And was, that's cool, man. Right? Like these are all the things that are coming out of it. I mean, I think this weekend's like a big con. Like, a, listen, like the celebs and musicians, they always step up, right? They always step up for the world causes and everything. And like we see all the collabs, we see it all coming together. But like technology, like you're seeing these like people are opening up their doors and their homes, and you're seeing like all the celebs sitting there and they're like doing all these intimate shows, and it feels like just you and them, man. And we're right. all like, yeah, listen, believe me, everyone's in different socio and economic situations right now, but we're all fucked, right? Okay. Like, that's a common denominator. Like, all, some yeah. of us are less fucked than others, but we're all fucked. Yeah, absolutely, man. This brings everybody to a same level almost. Um, 100%. 100%. So we're going to we're going to we're going to wrap it up here. I appreciate everyone that's been tuning in with me and my man Jay. Um he knows how much I he means to me for a long time. Someone I deeply respect and admire. Um a beacon, a shining light in the world of human resources, doing it well, doing it right and leading the way over at Complex. Jay, where can folks find you? Where can they connect with you? Where do they uh, on all social media it's uh, Jay Flatbush. Um you know what I mean? Uh, you gotta keep it, real. keep it real and uh, never forget where you came from. Um, so Jay Flatbush, 
And then, uh, yeah, man, I'm I'm on LinkedIn heavy, so you know that's a good place to connect. Just don't try to sell me no shit. I'm not right. Come on, not don't be don't be tone deaf. Don't be tone deaf. No, I'm. I don't want to see how you can better my business. Like, sell you a new ATS platform. Oh, come on, man, it's just stop it already, man. Yeah, uh, we'll get there. We'll- yeah, I don't know how effective that is. I, I guess some people, you know. Uh, so one one question. I actually, I mean, I don't want to go too back, but one thing I meant to ask you. Know, I'm going to ask you a question now. Are, are you guys hiring? Are you frozen? Are you kind of hanging tight? What's happening over there? Yeah, we we're not hiring at the same level we were uh, pre-COVID, but we are hiring for some select roles. Um, so and how are you yeah. doing that? You doing like all Zooms? You keeping it moving? You keeping the the flow all moving? Zooms, virtual onboarding, like mailing, uh, uh, laptops. So we can't. I'm the only person allowed in the office. I go about once a week. Is it like ghost town? Like there's like uh, bales of hay rolling down the hallway. Like I'll actually tell a quick story. Um, you go through people's desks and shit. <laughs> I'm, kidding. I'm kidding. No, but I, I have to go into the office to collect checks because we still have a lot of clients sending sending paper checks. Does but <clears throat> the day after 9/11, September 12, 2001, I was living uptown and. Um, I, I wanted to go check my fa- my father in Brooklyn, right? So I take the train, and something tells me to get off at Times Square because I, for those of you old enough to remember nine eleven, it was just like a shock to the system, and I wanted to kind of like feel New York City be New York again in a way. So I get o- I get off the train in Times Square, and I'm literally the only person in Times Square. That same my midday. It was, it was like out of that movie, I Am Legend. Yeah. Like I, that the next day after 9-11, I'm the only person in Times Square. And it was the most surreal feeling I ever had in my life. And I never thought I would experience that again. About two weeks ago, uh, for those that know, don't know, Complex's offices are in Times Square. So I go out, uh, go outside the office for a minute to smoke a cigarette. And I am in the middle of Times Square, and I am, again, the only person in Times Square. It was so eerie. It was like... Ten years later. Unbelievable, man. It was unbelievable. We're going we're going through something here, and we're going through it together. And, I mean, 9-11... I mean, the difference with 9-11, right? That was, that was one day, and it was over. I mean, yeah. the, the actual event was over, right? I mean, the, the ripple effects obviously lasted for a long time. But we don't got this end in sight. So I think right now, and I want to close this off on a positive note, that it's the optimism. It's the hope. It's the fact that we're in this together, man, that like there's so many silver linings. There's so many good things that are happening here. And we're going to mind our health. We're going to look out for our fellow man. We're going to be responsible. And we're going to come out this the other side. Jay, closing thoughts here. Give me, give me, give me one mantra, one kind of like one thing that you repeat to yourself every single day, man, that's positive. Uh, you know what? This is something that we used to tell ourselves in the army. We built for the struggle. You know what I mean? That was the thing that uh kept us going. So be built for the struggle, man. This is the struggle, but you gotta just let that shit roll off and and keep it moving. Uh you know, something else we used to tell ourselves in the army, uh FIDO. It was an acronym. Fuck it, drive on. And that's what you gotta do, man. Keep it moving, keep it moving. Everybody, Jay. I appreciate you, brother. Thank you so much for joining us. It, Everybody brother. tuning into the podcast live. Thank you for hanging out with us for a little bit on this Thursday happy hour. I have a huge week next week. I'm going to announce everything. I mean, we got we got global. We got global shit going on. Tremendous happy hour Thursday. We have a lot going on. Jay, I love you, brother. Be good. Yep. Take care. Wash your hands. Everybody, right. take care. Be good. Enjoy. Hey. Take care.